A very good afternoon. Welcome to BBC London. I'm Thomas McGill. Environmental campaigners have begun four days of action across central London. Much of the focus will be around Parliament Square and some government buildings where they have already been picketing this morning. The Umbrella Group, Extinction Rebellion, have pledged not to disrupt the London Marathon, which is happening on Sunday. But there are still concerns that other groups could be planning direct action. Well, Victoria Hollands has got more on this, and I imagine this is proving a bit of a headache for marathon bosses. Well, it has been, and I think there's also a slight sense of wait and see. There's around 200 different organisations under this uh, umbrella group, trade unions, Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth and faith groups as well. Um, there's already a series of events which have started this morning uh, in central London, picketing outside government buildings, displays, performances, that sort of thing. But the main camp will be in Parliament Square, uh, right alongside where 50,000 runners will run in the London Marathon uh, on Sunday. Now, uh, Extinction Rebellion have been talking to the Met and marathon organisers for around six months, and they're pretty confident that there won't be any specific disruption uh, from Extinction Rebellion themselves. But, but it is a very disparate group, so they can't be entirely certain. Um, now, they're going to have marshals at the edge of the camp, and they said that they will help prevent uh, any disruption there. But, of course, that doesn't cover the entire uh, route. And they have said that they won't actively weed out protesters. They're not going to do the police's job for them. There's also a big question mark over Just Stop Oil. Uh, uh, they haven't committed to no disruption. Uh, the Transport Secretary, Mark Harper, has said this morning that they will be very robust about dealing with people who break the law. You mentioned part of the route there. It's maybe worth reminding people of the route and um, what that might mean for in terms of road closures. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard, as we've seen in, in previous years, starting in Greenwich Park, of course, going through Charlton, Rotherhithe, Crossing Tower Bridge, Canary Wharf, uh, London Eye, a long approach to Buckingham Palace. Uh, people are being asked, actually, to stay away uh, if they're going to, to watch family and friends, but stay away from uh, the Mall, the finish line, and also from Parliament Square, where this camp is. And also, a quick reminder, that there is train disruption on Southern and Thameslink this weekend. So make sure you've planned your route before you go and watch this amazing event. OK, Victoria, so it's a busy weekend ahead for people then. Victoria Haunter, thank you. Well, sticking with the marathon and this year's race is only the second year that wheelchair users who require the assistance of being pushed have been allowed to take part. One woman who will participate this way on Sunday is former Argos Managing Director Sarah Weller, who has been getting some top tips from a wheelchair racing legend. Chris Slegg has more. Well over a million people have taken part in the London Marathon since the first in 1981. But Aaron Kerr is one of only four assisted wheelchair users to have done so. People who need pushing some or all of the way weren't permitted until he forced a change of rules for last year's event. This year, 13 such participants will be involved. Among them, Sarah Weller, who was diagnosed with progressive MS in 2009 and who had to start using a chair last August. I just think that the ability of somebody who's restricted in terms of what exercise you can do to have a chance to do this along with 45,000 other people running it is just an amazing feeling. It makes you feel part of, included in what everybody else has been enjoying for the last 30 years. Not sure they can catch him and we will win once again in London. David Weir is better than anyone at getting around the London Marathon course in a wheelchair. He's won it a record eight times. Ahead of her first London Marathon, Sarah got to meet a man taking part in his 24th. How's training been for you? It's been um, up and down, if I'm honest. What do you make of what she's doing? It's truly amazing. Like We, we spoke a few months ago before I went to my training camp and, yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing what, what she's gone through and, and, and now getting in a wheelchair. You know, it's all new and it's probably hard mentally to, to deal with, but, you know, she's taking this challenge on and, and uh, yeah, I'll take my hat off to her. She's, she's worked hard and I think she's really going to enjoy it, to be honest, and um, she's just an amazing woman. Sarah is a successful businesswoman who was managing director of Argos for seven years. Are there any learnings from the business world that you feel will help you in this marathon challenge? In business, you have to get very good at problem solving. Coming to this marathon, it's been a whole series of problems to solve. I mean, all sorts of things like what sort of chair, what sort of nutrition, what sort of gloves, what sort of tracks can I use, what sort of routes can I take? I want to do something positive with my situation um, and, I, and hopefully this is about as positive as you can get. Having herself been inspired, Sarah Weller is now inspiring many others too. Chris Slegg, BBC London.
Yes, and good luck to her and everyone taking part on Sunday. Now, Catherine Parr from Edmonton has experienced hateful comments all her life because of how she looks. She has recurrent facial paralysis because of a tumour. And now she's bravely speaking out and trying to make a difference by campaigning for the charity Changing Faces. It says that hate crime directed at people with visible differences is on the rise. Wendy Hurrell reports. There was a lot of looks, stares, name calling, one such comment. I heard right next to my daughter I was, oh, you're a lovely girl, shame about your mother. They were ignorant to the fact they'd even done it. Because they hadn't been pulled up at that moment, it hadn't left as much of a lasting impression on them as it had on me. Catherine has had recurring facial paralysis since she was two, recently discovered to be caused by a tumour. She's experienced hateful comments throughout her life. And that is something the charity Changing Faces says is on the increase. Its research shows that a third of people with visible differences has experienced hate crime. And younger people are more likely to encounter hostile behaviour. 66% of 18 to 34 year olds say it's happened to them. The charity's campaign encourages people to report hate crimes and wants more support from police and authorities for people with visible differences. Changing Faces ambassador Adam Pearson, who appeared in the Scarlett Johansson film Under the Skin, and more recently a contestant on Celebrity Masterchef, uses his platform to start conversation. I think these figures are symptomatic of something that's been actually going on and bobbling away under the surface for quite some time now. And now it's simply being highlighted and brought into the light. Anyone at any point could go flying headfirst through a car windshield, be involved in an accident, acquire a, um, a disability such as Bell palsy. And in, in that moment, you're, you're one of us. And then how do you want to be treated? I can't change myself. But that doesn't mean I can't change the world around me. Things don't have to stay this way. They, they should be better, and they could be better if everyone just kind of worked towards it. Wendy Hurrell, BBC London. So what's the weather going to be like for the runners on Sunday? Kate Kinsella has the forecast. Good afternoon. It's a chilly and rather unsettled end to the week. We started this morning under grey skies. West London, a dry start, but the rain has been spreading west throughout the morning. Some heavy bursts of rain mixed in there as well. Pushed through on the east northeasterly breeze. Now you can see it is moving away westwards. Behind it, we've had some showers and we'll see a few more as we head through the afternoon. But the cloud thinning, breaking some sunny smells, of course, could spark off further showers. And it's chilly. Temperatures just 12 Celsius this afternoon. Now, overnight tonight, any remaining showers should clear. And under clear skies, of course, the temperature it is going to get quite chilly. 2 Celsius, but a bit more cloud edging in as we head through to dawn on Saturday morning. It's a dry start to the weekend. Some bright spells around first thing, some sunny spells, but you'll see the cloud continues to increase. We'll see showers developing through the course of Saturday and also perhaps a longer spell of rain towards the end of the day in the west. Temperatures again on the cool side 12 or 13 celsius sunday of course the london marathon now we are looking at perhaps a longer spell of rain for sunday morning but drier perhaps for the afternoon with some showers temperatures on the cool side not too bad for runners but spectators might need an extra layer that's it from me just a reminder there will be full coverage of the marathon on bbc radio london on sunday from nine with robert ellams who will be live at the cutty sark and then Aaron Paul will be on the Mall from 2. We'll be back at 6.30 with your evening news. Until then, have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.